Hi, and welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy, and I'm coming to you from Eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Wednesday, June 1st, 2022. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you really enjoy this episode. You can find me online on Instagram at Noble Character Crafts, and you can get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode. This channel is all about my crafty life, and today I have knitting, crocheting, and cross-stitch to share with you all. So I am super excited to share with you what I have been working on over the last few weeks. Before I get into that though, I just want to quickly mention the make along that I am hosting again this year, which is called the Make 9 2022 Mal, for you to join in the Make 9 Challenge where you choose nine projects that you would like to make this year. Post a grid of those projects to Instagram and hash use the hashtag Make 9 2022 Mal to be entered to win a giveaway prize that I draw periodically throughout the year. You can win a prize whether you post your grid works in progress, or any finished objects that you get done from your grid, um, any of those posts that you put on Instagram with the hashtag are entries to win a prize. Two episodes ago, I announced a prize winner from the Make 9 2022 Mal, but I never heard from that winner, so I'm going to be re-gifting that prize, which includes this beautiful skein of yarn by Labiana May. It is on a merino super sock base, which is 75% super wash merino and 25% nylon fingering weight. And the colorway is called J. Kim is Grello. And along with this skein of yarn, you're also winning a copy of a beautiful sock pattern that was generously donated to the, uh, to the podcast or for the make along. And that is called the Abyss Socks. And it is a beautiful design by Ghazal Muhammad. So you'll also be winning a copy of this pattern. And the winner is Wendy, who on Instagram is WKH25. So congratulations, Wendy. Thank you so much for joining in the Make Along. Please get in contact with me either through Instagram or through my email and let me know your full mailing address as well as your Ravelry username or an email that you could be sent that sock pattern to. So let me know your contact information and your mailing address and I'll be so happy to get this off in the mail to you. And then I drew another prize winner as well. And this prize is getting this skein of yarn by Hedgehog Fibers. And it is on a 80% blue face Lester wool, 20% nylon base, again, fingering weight. And this one is called Catapult. So it just has some beautiful multicolored um, specks and it's a lot of variegation in this skein, but it's beautiful. And I also am going to be giving you this stitch marker set that I received in the order that I placed with Hobby, and they sent along this stitch marker set, so I thought I would gift this to you as well. It's got some really cute stitch markers on there. This one says just one more row, so it's a cute little stitch marker set. So I thought I would send that along with this beautiful hank of yarn. And the winner for this one is Lizzie, who on Instagram is at Garden underscore knits. So congratulations, Lizzie. Same for you if you can just get in contact with me and let me know your full name and mailing address. I'll get that off in the mail to you as soon as possible as well. Thank you so much to everybody who's been joining in the make along all year long. Please don't hesitate to continue to join in. And if you want any more details about the make along, please see the description box below because I have a few more details down there. If you have any questions, feel free to get in contact with me and let me know any questions that you might have. I have a few finished objects to share with you all, the first of which is this big afghan that I was able to complete as a gift for my niece and her husband. They eloped last summer and got married, and so I wasn't able to, you know, I wasn't able to make a gift since they eloped. It was all a surprise, and I thought it would just be so nice to gift them an afghan for their home. 
and my niece loves sunflowers. So that's why I was inspired to use this pattern to make her this afghan. I'll go ahead and stand up to show you what it looks like and then I'll give you a few more details about it. Here it is as best as I can show it. It's a bit difficult. <laughs> it's really heavy <laughs> but there you get an idea of how big it is and what it looks like in its entirety okay so this pattern is called the crocodile stitch sunflower square and it's just a square pattern and so I use that pattern to make it into a blanket. It is by Caitlin's Contagious Creations. And as per usual, I made a few modifications, the first of which is the yarn weight that I used. The original pattern calls for you to use worsted weight and I used a bulky weight yarn. I used Knit Picks Mighty Stitch Bulky Weight, which is 80% acrylic, 20% superwash wool. The three colors that I used are bark, canary, and silver. And this yarn is, I, I just looked a few days ago, it's still, some of the colors are still available on the website, but I believe it's in the clearance section. So I'm pretty sure they're discontinuing this yarn. But it worked up really well for this pattern. I'm really happy with it. Like I said, it, it's a very heavy blanket, but it's almost like a weighted blanket in that way. And that can be really comforting. So I hope that that they will like it even though it's pretty heavy. <laughs> um, the hook that I use, since I was using um, a thicker yarn, I went up a hook size to a J six millimeter hook. The original pattern calls for an H five millimeter hook, I believe. So I made 12 squares as you could see as when I held it up. And so I did three by four I used the whip stitch and stitched through the back loop only when I was stitching the squares together and that worked really well. As I've mentioned before, I learned that technique from the previous afghan that I made. It had called for that joining method, just use a whip stitch and go through only the back loop when you're stitching the squares together and it just makes for such a nice seamless join, I think. So here is a join and it just makes it a really neat and tidy. It lays really flat on both sides. Here's the back side. So you can see it lays really nicely on both the front and back. And yeah, I'm really happy with that. I should show you what it looks like completely on the back. So it's obviously not as pretty as the front, but it's, you know, more flat. So it'd be obviously more comfortable to lay it against you that way. So that works well. I also changed the pattern because I added four extra rounds to each square, just repeating the last round four extra times to make each square a little larger. And that was super easy to modify. That last round is just a simple double crochet st stitch all the way around. So I just continued that for four extra rounds to make each square larger. And then for the border, I wanted a simple border just to add a little bit of, you know, a finishing touch to the blanket, but I didn't want it to be too detailed because, you know, with the sunflowers, I just thought that it was already busy enough, I guess, as an Afghan, and I just wanted a simple border. So I looked online and found a few stitches, but I kind of did my own thing again. So what I did, I was inspired by, I don't think I wrote it down. No, I didn't write it down, but I was inspired by an, an, a pattern that I found and I just kind of did my own thing. Anyway, I will go through what I did. So for the first round, I did a single crochet in the spaces in between each of the double crochet stitches from the square. And then I chained two and I skipped one space. And then I repeated that. So single crochet, chain two, skip one space, and then single crochet into the next stitch. And then on the corners, I did a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in each corner. And then for the following two rounds for the border, 
So a total, I did a total of three of these type of rounds, but for the next two rounds, I just did a single crochet into that chain two space from the previous round. Again, chain two, and then continued single crocheting into each chain two space. Then for the fourth round, I did the exact, the same idea, but instead of doing single crochet stitches, I did double crochet stitches. These are all in US terms. And I, so I did a chain, um, I'm sorry, I did a double crochet in each chain two space and it's then a chain two again. So continued double crochet. And again, in the corners, I did double crochet, chain two, double crochet in each corner. Then I did one more round of the single crochet pattern <laughs> like I did for the first three for the last round. So a total of five rounds for the border, three with single crochet chain two, one with double crochet chain two, and then one with single crochet chain two again. I hope that makes sense. But I really love how that, um, how that worked out for the border. I think it looks really nice, simple, but effective and just finishes off the blanket beautifully, I thought. So I think that's all I have to share for this project. I'm so happy I was able to finish it up and I'm really excited to get this in the mail. I wonder, I'm curious as to how much it will cost to mail it just because it, well, I did weigh it. I weighed myself and then I picked up the blanket and did the difference and it weighs five pounds, which I thought it was going to be more than that because just holding it, it feels like more than that. But I think, I still think that five pounds is probably quite a bit for a blanket, <laughs> but I'm not really sure. I was also able to finish these socks that I was knitting for my friend, Tina. She gave me this yarn for me to make her some socks. Her daughter had gifted her this yarn and she doesn't knit socks. <laughs> Tina doesn't knit socks. She does knit, but not socks. Anyway, um, she just gave me this yarn and I said I would make her some socks with it. So I was so happy to get these made up for her. The yarn was really interesting. It was called Panda Soy and it is a fingering weight yarn. It is 49% bamboo, 33% soy, and 18% elastic nylon. So there, it's a great um, makeup of fiber for a, you know, a cooler sock or a sock that would be nice to wear in the summertime. The colorway is called stained glass. I used US zero two millimeter needles. I cast on 64 stitches and did a two by two ribbing for 20 rounds and then just went into plain stockinette for the sock. Did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset. And again, plain stockinette for the foot and did a rounded toe, kitchener the toes together. So really, really simple. The most, my most simple and basic sock recipe that I use. And they were really easy and fun to work up. I really love how the colors, um, I really like this area and the foot where the, the colors just kind of get these little tiny blips of color. Of course, we get a bit, of, a bit of pooling in the cuffs and as I was doing the gusset decreases, but I still think they're really fun. And I'm excited to gift these to Tina. I haven't seen Tina in so long, so I'm so excited to set up a time where I can get these to her and get to see her because it's been a long time since I've seen her. Okay, and then I was also able to finish these shorty socks that I was making for myself. These I used a couple of yarns. As you can see, the first yarn here is by Yarn Bee. It came in a six pack mini set. It's called Pigment and Fiber. And each colorway isn't labeled, but the set of mini skeins is called Fridays in Florence. And this is just the dark charcoal that comes in that set. So I thought it went really well with this other colorway that I wanted to use that was from my stash. It was a colorway that I had dyed a long time ago. And I just had a, I think it was a little around 40 grams that I had left over in this colorway. And I really like how these worked up. So for these, I cast on 60 stitches. Again, I used US zero two millimeter needles. I did a two by one ribbing for 15 rounds. 
and then I went immediately into the slip stitch heel flap. For the top of the socks, I just did a knit five pearl one pattern to give a bit of a ribbing texture along the top. And then I added in the slip stitch detail that I always add to my socks because that is where I wear a hole in my socks most quickly. And so I just do a slip one, knit one stitch across the bottom for one round. And then the next round, I knit all of the stitches and repeat those two rounds over the sec the ball of the foot, the section that goes over the ball of my foot. And then again, I just did a rounded toe using that yarn bee um, colorway. By the way, the color that or the yarn that I dyed here is on a fingering weight 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. But I really like how these turned out. I think they're super fun, and I was so happy to use up that little mini that I had had in my stash for quite a long time. So very happy to have another pair of these shorty socks, but I need more. I've just, like I mentioned before, I've just been really enjoying wearing the shorty socks that I have knit lately, and so I will probably cast on another pair soon. But I have a lot of works in progress to share with you all. I've kind of gone a little crazy with my works in progress. So right now I have six works in progress that I have am working on, which is a little too many for my liking normally. I don't normally have that many on the go. Only one of them is a work in progress that you have seen before. So I have five new projects that I've started just a little ridiculous. But I will start showing you those things. The first one that you have seen before is a project that I started back in September of last year and then I've just put it on hold for such a long time and I finally picked it up again after I finished my niece's afghan. This is a baby blanket that I am working on. And it is called the Diamond Bobble Blanket Crochet Pattern by Caroline, I think is how you pronounce it, but I'm not 100% sure. I am using up some scraps of Knit Picks yarn that, well, not really scraps, but just quite a bit of leftovers that I had from another baby blanket that I made last year. It is Knit Picks Brava in three colorways, Cobblestone Heather show you as I fold them up. This charcoal gray color is called Cobblestone Heather, Clarity, and Tide Pool. And I'm really, really enjoying this pattern. Here you can see this adorable cactus progress keeper that my cousin Allie made and gifted to me. That is marking where I was the last time I showed this off. So I've made a lot of progress on this since I showed it to you last. And I'm really enjoying working on this project. It's so enjoyable. You do have to kind of keep track of where you're at in the pattern to make these, these stitches are called, I always forget what she calls them, bean stitches. She calls this the bean stitch. But it's a really fun stitch pattern to work up, but you do have to kind of keep track of you know, where you're at in the pattern, but it's super easy to memorize and tell where you're at in the pattern. And once you kind of get into the groove of the stitch pattern, it's super mindless and relaxing and enjoyable. I've loved working on this lately. For some reason, the Clarity colorway is a lot thinner. They're all in the same base, all from Knit Picks. I ordered all of the yarn at the same time, but the Clarity colorway is a bit thinner than the tide pool and the cobblestone. And you can even tell here on the edge that the clarity kind of goes in a little bit, I think because it is a bit thinner. And you can even tell, I think, just in the height of this section compared to this section, don't you think? I think it's kind of obvious, but I'm hoping that once I put, the, this blanket has a border that goes around the edge of it. Let's see if there's a good picture. Yeah, it's not a very good picture because I've had this pattern printed out since September and it's been, you know, it's kind of ratty, <laughs> but you can kind of see that it has a beautiful border that goes around the edge of it. And so I'm hopeful that that will even things out once it's all done. Anyway, I just had um, a few different skeins of these colorways left over and I wanted to use them up for this blanket. I am planning to do 
this I think you can kind of see the pattern I'm following. I'm using clarity for every other row and then alternating the cobblestone and the tide pool colors, you know, alternating those as you can kind of see the pattern. So the next, I'm just done with this section and I'm ready to do, oh, I've lost a few stitches there, but that's no big deal. Anyway, I'm ready to do another stripe of the cobblestone heather colorway. And I think that will be the last of that color. So it's not gonna be even on both sides. And then I think I will, I'm not really sure how much sure I have left to finish this off. Anyway, I'm gonna kind of play it by ear. I, I'm pretty sure, I'm hoping that when I started this blanket back in September, I had measured out and calculated how much yarn I had and I'm hoping that I have enough yarn to kind of finish it off in a way that looks nice but I'm a little bit unsure of how much yarn I have to finish this off. Anyway, we'll see. I'm enjoying it though, and hopefully it will turn out to be a nice sized baby blanket. Oh, I'm using an H five millimeter hook for this project, which is what the pattern calls for. I'm really enjoying that project. It's so much fun. It's a nice one. It's a it's a project that is really nice and relaxing, and I don't have to concentrate on it much. But it's not one that I've been taking with me on the go at all since it's you know a larger project and I have the three different colors and stuff. But it's a project that I've been I've been working on a lot as I sit out on our porch lately, which has just been like the highlight of my day when I just get a chance to go out on our porch. The weather has just been so nice lately. And I really enjoyed a lot of time out on our porch working on that project. So that's been wonderful. Okay, on to all of my new works in progress. My first one I am very excited about because it is the first project that I am finally working on from one of my Make 9 2022 boards. So I haven't been a very good participant in my own make along this year. But I did make two Make 9 boards. One of them had all garments, so all sweaters or tops on it, and or cardigans. And then the second board I made was all accessories. And I hadn't done anything from either board yet this year. And I'm so excited that I finally started one of those projects. So in this bag, which is a bag that I won many moons ago from a giveaway, on Instagram and it is by Allison Barnes collection and in here is the slip on no slanting slip on by Ann Vensel so it's more of a summery top and I'm super excited to have this on the go and excited to hopefully get it done before summer ends so that I can wear it this this I know upcoming summer season. So I am really excited about how it's coming along. This is the front of the piece and I'm just now working on the back which is pretty much matching the front. Well it is matching right now and it will be um, just a little bit longer than the front piece so that I think it will raise it up like this before you join it in the round. This is made using some really beautiful yarn that I got from, I ordered from Lion Brand. It's called Kobu. I first saw this yarn on the Fiberbound podcast by Alexandra. Hello, Alexandra. And I, she made a summery garment using this yarn in a different colorway last year. And so I wanted to try it out. It is... 51% cotton and 25% rayon from bamboo. And this colorway is called peach. And it's just a beautiful shade that I am really excited about using. It is a DK weight. I did not do a gauge swatch for this pattern, which is very unlike me, but I just took a chance on this. I know that I knit very loosely and I I don't know, I just decided that it was such a small garment that I would just start knitting it and see how it went. And I think it's okay. I went down quite a few needle sizes. I'm using a, I'm not sure, 
a US 3 3.25 millimeter needle. And the original pattern calls for a four millimeter needle, which would be a US 6. So I went down several needle sizes again, just because I know that I knit so loosely. Now the sizing for this pattern is pretty limited, I think. It goes in centimeters, which I'm not great at. But I am knitting the large size, which is recommended for a 89 centimeter bust. And you're supposed to have eight centimeters of negative ease. No, I think that's the finished measurement is 89 centimeters. Right, that's right. But I, I can't now remember what I measure in centimeters, um, but it was like 90 something. And I, so I don't have quite eight centimeters of ease if I get gauge, which I kind of checked my gauge and it seems like it's right, but I haven't blocked it or anything yet. So it's still kind of a guess, but I've tried it on. But actually I can try it on right now because of the way it's constructed right now. So you can kind of get an idea of what it will look like. And I think it's gonna be okay. I like how it's kind of closer fitting under the arms here, which actually here's a pattern or a picture from the pattern that shows that it kind of goes a bit, I think that's a little bit deeper of a armhole on her than it is on me, but I'm glad of that because I would prefer it to be a closer fitting under the arm. Anyway, I think it's gonna be okay. I like this design because you don't have to wear a special bra with it. It will just be, you know, you'll still be able just to wear a regular bra with it, which is nice. Some tank tops, you can't do that. And I, that's important to me. <laughs> anyway, um, it's just full of these beautiful twisted stitches and then this fun texture across the main body. It's just really simple, but fun and effective. I think it's really pretty. Oh, but anyway, I didn't finish talking about the sizes. So I, like I said, I'm making the large, which I normally would make probably a medium size in most patterns. And the largest size that this comes in is 104 centimeters. So it's not a huge, and the smallest size is 75 centimeters. Anyway, it's not a huge size range, I don't think, but I'm really enjoying working on this. It does take a bit of concentration. You kind of have to you know, keep track of where you're at and the pattern is clearly written, but you do just need to concentrate on where you're at in the pattern and things like that. So it's not one that I work on a lot. Um, I have to be able to sit down quietly and work on this project, but it's not really that hard. It just takes a little bit of concentration. Anyway, I've been enjoying it and I'm ex so excited for the finished object, hoping that it all works out in the end. My next project is another project from my Make 9 2022 board. This from the, my accessories board. And this is being held in one of my own um, project bags that I made. And I am finally working on these socks, which I have been, I've had this yarn ready to go for several months, anxious to start these socks. And I just kept putting it off. Anyway, these are the Chicken Scratch Socks by Backwoods Knits. And I cast these on on May 28th as the Summer Sock Camp with Crazy Sock Lady kicked off. So I'm excited to be joining in that make-along again this year. And this gorgeous yarn that I have enjoyed working with so much is from the Woolen Homestead. Tiffany and Ethan used to dye yarn and they don't anymore, but this was gifted to me in a Christmas Advent swap that we did a few years ago. And this colorway is called Hogs Need Holiday. And it is just so enjoyable to knit up this colorway. I just love the colors that come through in the pops of color and just the main background color is gorgeous. I just love this colorway so much. This yarn, now I'm, I'm, I'm questioning the base. The tag says it's a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base, but it doesn't feel like a normal 75-25 to me. It feels much better <laughs> than a normal 75-25. It feels 
more rustic and just woolier than normal. It's not as slick and um, sleek as normal 75-25 sock yarn. It's I love it. It's so nice. I just love the... It's just woolier. I love it. I don't know what else to say. It just feels great. I love knitting with it. Anyway, I'm so excited to be using up that yarn finally after having in my stash for a few years. I am making the small size, which is a 60 stitch, um, six, 60 stitch sock. And I am using US zero two millimeter needles again. I did a German twisted cast on and then did the um, 20 rounds of ribbing per the pattern. It's a knit three purl two ribbing. And I've just started, I've only done one, I've only done one half of the first round. But you can see that beautiful chicken scratchy type of stitch, I guess. It's called a, I don't know what it's called, like a dip stitch, I think, for that first round, you can see the texture that's forming there and it's so beautiful, I think. And that stitch, um, I didn't know how to do, but I obviously just did it for this first half and it's really fun to do. So I'm enjoying this pattern so much. I'm excited to get into it some more to see that beautiful design develop. I think I have a picture I can show you, maybe. No, I don't. Oh, right here. It's not a very good picture and I have to hide the pattern. I mean, it's kind of little. I don't know if it'll show up very well, but you can't really tell, but it's a beautiful textured pattern. I'm so excited about these. And also just super excited to finally start my Make Nine boards. When I first shared my Make Nine boards, I said that I wasn't very hopeful that I would be able to get them all done. And you know, as the year progresses, I'm more and more doubtful. But, oh, these uh, chicken scratch socks are also fitting because we just got 15 chicks uh, as that will be laying hens. And so we're so excited to have them. They're just a few weeks old. I'll put in a snippet of them, a little video that I took of them at the end of the video if you're curious to see what those chicks look like. But they've been super fun to have, and I just thought it was fitting to start these now that we have chicks. So I'm very excited about that. My next project is another project from my Make Nine board. And this is the last one that I've started so far. But again, super excited to have started these. These are another pair of socks from my accessories board. And this again is being held in a project bag that I made myself. And these are the Solstice Stockings by Rebecca Blair. I haven't made much progress on these yet, but I've started at least, so that's good. The yarn that I'm using for this project is Patton's Croy Socks in the muslin colorway. This is a, it's labeled as a fingering weight yarn, but it's more of a sport weight yarn. The yardage is... 166 yards for 50 grams. So it's just a little bit thicker than your normal fingering weight yarn. So I'm using it as a sport weight because that's what this pattern calls for. It's 75% washable wool, 25% nylon. And as you might see there, I got it on clearance for only $1.99 a skein. So that was a great deal. For this pattern, I again went down in my needle size to a US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter needle. Again, just because I know that I knit loosely and I usually need to go down. I can't remember what she calls for. She calls for a US 5, no, I'm sorry, a US 2, 2.75 millimeter needle. And here is a picture of what they look like. So I have just started one of the socks. I like to knit my socks two at a time, but this cuff section is knit um, horizontally, I guess you would say. You're knitting just the cuff going around the circumference of your calf. So I've just started that. I'm on my second repeat of the lace pattern, which you can probably see here. So it starts with a provisional cast on. That's what this pink yarn is. 
I just did a crocheted provisional cast on and I used the tutorial by Very Pink Knits to know how to do that. And you just repeat this lace pattern, um, I think six or seven times to do the circumference of the leg and then that will be the top of the sock and then you'll start knitting down. So I'm hoping and planning to knit the cuffs and then once I've got everything working in the round, I will put both of the socks on my needles and knit them two at a time, hopefully, because that's just my preference for knitting socks. I haven't made a ton of progress on those yet. Oh, and I'm making the medium size for these socks, which is a 56 stitch uh, sock. Okay, I think that's it for those. The next project that I started is pretty random. It was just one of the, once in a while I get a uh, nagging to try a project, just to try it, <laughs> and that's what this is. It's being held in another project bag. I think this is actually the very first project bag that I ever made. But in here I am holding some mystery yarn that I got from my friend Tina. And I'm pretty sure it's just 100% acrylic in this red color. And I wanted to try the, um, I had seen um, a picture of these pot holders that are knit diagonally and then they kind of just, or I'm sorry, crocheted diagonally. And then they just kind of fold in on themselves and they're double thick. So the pattern that I found is called the Crocheted Double Thick Diagonal Pot Holder by Mielkes Fiber Arts. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's my guess. Anyway, it's a super simple pattern and I'm really enjoying working on it. I haven't done much on it yet, but this is a good project to kind of take on the go, I think. Um, anyway, I modified this pattern a little bit. The website that I will link in the description box below calls for you to cast or start with a chain of 26 stitches. And I, and that, they say in the pattern that that determines, you know, how big your pot holder will be. And I believe that it will be the diagonal. So this, you know, will be the size of the pot holder. And I wanted mine to be bigger than just 26 stitches. I thought was going to be more like a size of a coaster. So instead of starting with 26 stitches, I started with 40 stitches. And then you're just doing single crochet stitches through the back loop. And it just kind of folds in on itself to form this pot holder. So I haven't gotten very far yet, but I'm enjoying it. I've kind of made myself put it down because it's a really good project to have for just on the go when you don't have time or you don't have the ability to concentrate on what you're doing, this is a good mindless project. The hook I'm using is a G four millimeter hook. So I'm excited about this. I just think that, well, it's nice to be able to use up little scraps of worsted weight yarn and I think it'll be a nice project to go through some of my odds and ends that I have in my stash for worsted weight and I think it might make a nice gift. So yeah, I'm excited about that project. The last work in progress that I have to share with you is being held in another bag that I made myself. I showed this off a few, well, probably several episodes ago. This is my first prototype of a larger project bag that I am working on. I am still working on my next project bag update. I cut out a lot of fabric to make a lot of bags again for this update. I, I prefer doing larger updates, fewer but larger updates. It's just easier for me. Anyway, I will have a few of these larger bags going in my next shop update, but again, I don't know when that will be. I just work on them little by little every day and it takes me a long time to get through all of them. But anyway, this is just a larger bag that I um, made, you know, it's my first prototype of that, of this new larger size bag. And in here is a new cross stitch project that I have started. And I'm, I'm so excited about this. I don't cross, cross stitch a lot. I did do a project uh, last year, around this time, I believe, a cross stitch project. And I did enjoy that, but it's not a, pro it's not a craft that I do a lot of. I haven't done a lot of it and I don't do it very often. But I 
love listening and watching the uh, YouTube channel for the pastor of Parkside Church in Cleveland, Ohio, I think. His name is Alistair Begg, and he also has a program on the radio called Truth for Life, and I just really enjoy listening to his sermons. And I listen to him almost every every day. I listen to one of his sermons. And I just really appreciate his biblical teaching. He's really a great biblical teacher. And he, a lot of times in his sermons, he quotes hymns. And one day I was listening to one of his sermons and he quoted this poem. And I went and looked it up online to see if I could find it in a book or something because I just really enjoyed it. I really appreciated this poem that he shared. And as I was looking it up, I found this cross stitch pattern that had this poem in it and I just fell in love. So here it is, it's called Overheard in an Orchard. The design for this cross stitch is by Cheryl Granda, but the actual poem is by Elizabeth Cheney and it was written back in 1859. And it says, said the robin to the sparrow, I should really like to know why these anxious human beings rush about and worry so. Said the sparrow to the robin, friend, I think that it must be that they have no heavenly father such as cares for you and me. And I just absolutely loved the, the uh, meaning and sentiment behind that poem. Just a great reminder that we should not worry that our heavenly father is taking care of us and will continue to do so. And it's so easy to forget that and to get worried. And I just really enjoyed this reminder. And if you've watched before, you know that I really have a love of birds and we love to bird watch. And yeah, I just really appreciated this design. But of course I have to make modifications to it because that's just me. <laughs> and I really wasn't a huge fan of the apples. I mean, they're okay, but I was kind of like, the apples are a little random to me and I would rather have flowers all across instead of apples. So I liked the little pink app or the little pink flowers, but instead of those apples, I decided to change my pattern to have pansies because they are one of my favorite flowers. And I found, a. Um, I found a pattern on Pinterest that had this design and I just kind of charted it out myself for a pansy pattern and that's what I used instead of the apple because it was it could fit right in that same space. So here is what I have done so far. So you can see instead of the apples I've just replaced those with pansies and I've had fun playing around with the different color combinations for the pansies. I really had fun with those. They were so addictive to work on and I just got through all of them pretty quickly because I was so excited to see how they would look. The cloth that I'm using is a 14 count Ada cloth. And let's see if I have the I don't know if it had a, a name for the color, but it's just pure white. So I was trying to decide on the cover of this pattern, they use like a variegated fabric that kind of has a green shade to it. But I just decided that I'm probably gonna hang this cross stitch in here in our bedroom and our walls are white. And so I just thought it would look good to have white fabric. I've also started on the tree and the leaves, as you can see, and I've also done the robin's feet right here. I'm just doing my own colors. I'm using totally random embroidery floss. <laughs> I have just, a, I don't even know where I got all this um, thread from. I did buy a few from the store, like some DMC that I needed to, you know, kind of fill in the gaps for what I didn't have enough of. But a lot of it is just, I got a friendship bracelet kit for Christmas a couple years ago and I'm using some of that floss. And I had some floss that I've had for years. I'm using some floss from an embroidery kit that I got. So anyway, I can't tell you what colors I'm using. I'm just using totally random colors. Also in the original pattern, she used a lot of variegated thread 
for these pink flowers, you can see that the color kind of vary, is variegated and also the green leaves have some variegation to them. And I don't have any of that type of thread. I just have solid thread. So that's, but I decided to use some different shades of pink. So you can see those little pink flowers, every one is a little bit different in the shade. And then also the leaves I'm using, I think those are the six colors, what you can see right there. Those are the six colors that I have. And the original pattern only calls for three different colors, but again, they were variegated. So I wanted to add a little bit more variety to my leaf colors. And so I'll be using those six colors and just randomly placing them throughout the different tree designs. But yeah, I'm really excited about this. And I don't think it'll be too much work. I mean, really, if you look at it, there's a lot of blank white space and the wording takes up a lot of the stitching, which I don't think will take as long to do as the cross stitching does. So I'm very, very excited about this project. It's been a lot of fun to work on so far. And yeah, I'm so excited to to have this in my, as part of my home decor. So yeah, I'm excited to continue to work on that. I will link to um, the Truth For Life YouTube channel in case you would like to check out Alistair Begg's sermons. I just highly recommend them. They're so great. I have a few new things to share with you all that, oh, that's random. I have that hook in my lap. This is the hook I'm using for the baby blanket that I showed you, the very first whip I showed you, and that's still sitting in my lap. How funny. Okay, I received a few things in the mail. Both of them were surprises to me. The first one was a prize that I won from the Rose Opal Knits podcast, and I hadn't had a chance to watch their, um, at that time, their most recent episode before I got my prize in the mail. And then I, of course, went and watched the episode right away because that was, I didn't know what it was for until I looked at the card that Erica and Daphne sent and it said, your scrappy socks are lovely, congratulations. So then I knew that I must have won it from their scrappy sock mal that they had done. And I had participated in that by posting on Instagram. Anyway, so they sent along their business card and this very cute pinwheel progress keeper stitch marker. It's so sweet, I love this so much. I believe that Erica made that. And then I also received this beautiful mini skein set. Well, it's a 50 gram, this, this skein is 50 grams and then this one is 20 grams from Willow Tree Yarn. So I love this so much and it also comes with a progress keeper, this tree on it. And this is called Island Retreat. They're both on a 7525 base. Aren't they beautiful? I love these colors so much and they will make a perfect pair of um, shorty socks. So that's what I'm planning to use these for is to make another pair of shorty socks. So I'm so excited about those. Thank you so much, ladies, both Erica, Daphne, and Angela, the dyer behind Willow Tree Yarn. So thank you so much. I am so appreciative of this prize that I won. So exciting, <laughs> thank you. And then I also received a package all the way from South Africa from Charmaine. If you've watched for a while, you might remember that Charmaine was a winner of one of the Make 9 2022 prizes. And then she gifted the she gifted a copy of one of her beautiful cowl patterns to us for the Make Along. And I gifted that away a while back. But then she sent me this package in the mail that was just such a surprise. And in it, she had it packaged so beautifully, by the way. Everything, the wrapping, the card that she sent, everything was so beautifully packaged. And you'll kind of get an idea of that just by looking at these things. So here she sent these three minis. They are three, um, let's see, I think they total 40 grams. Yeah, that's right, I think. And they are... I guess it doesn't have a colorway name. It just says gray green mini. So that's probably not the colorway name. But anyway, it is a, they're by Open Sky Yarns. And they're on a 75% merino, 25% nylon base. But isn't that just the most beautiful colorway? I love it. It's so pretty. 
beautiful specks of color and I just love this so much. It's so pretty. And look, she's got this cute little clip on here. Isn't that sweet? I just put that on the card because I just thought it was so adorable. And there's a little stitch marker there. And then she also sent me, also from Open Sky Fiber, or Open Sky Yarns, these beautiful stitch markers. Those are so pretty. And she even sent me a little lavender sachet that she made from, with lavender from her garden. And it's really, really nice. So thank you so much, Charmaine. That was such a surprise coming all the way from South Africa. And I did not know it was coming, but she surprised me with that. So I'm so grateful. Thank you so much, Charmaine. I really appreciate that as well. So I think that is all that I have to share with you all today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you really enjoyed this episode. Please feel free to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I would appreciate that so much. Thanks again for watching. I hope you all are doing really well. Take care. Bye-bye.